Okay, welcome to the uh, four o'clock session, last session today on uh, Wednesday at uh, Altconf. Uh, we have uh, Marek Zadowski to, uh, from IBM talking about serverless computing. Thank you very much for introduction. Um, so um, this session is about serverless mobile backend as a service. Um, we'll have some uh, hands-on. So for those who would like to try it, uh, we have this super uh, cryptic uh, link, ibm.b slash capital B, D, 2, K, capital D, M. And this link will allow you to, uh, to uh, sign up for IBM Cloud free of charge. Uh, we have uh, so-called light accounts and you will be able to run your uh, serverless um, applications. Um, and we will do uh, first trials now. Um, as far as I remember with, the, um, with some latest um, uh, uh, smartphones, you are able to, um, uh, to really um, uh, do it on, even on the smartphone without, uh, without laptop or, or you can do it on iPad because we are going mostly to use uh, browser-based um, approach. So you will see serverless uh, Swift on the, in the backend. I will also deploy one application on, uh, using Xcode, so you, you are uh, more than welcome to, to join me. Um, and uh, at the end, I expect to have a couple of minutes for uh, questions and answers. And um, so a um, little bit about myself. Uh, I started uh, um, coding with Java when Java was at the same age as Swift. Uh, and I had more hair uh, at that time. Uh, it was uh, 99 when I came first time to Silicon Valley. As you can guess from my San Francisco accent, I wasn't born uh, in the orchards nearby Cupertino. I was born in Poland and I was traveling around the world. world. Um, Java and I hope Swift uh, will provide for, for living for me. And, um, and I'm so excited to, to be here. Uh, it's really a privilege to speak in front of you. Um, when I was working for NASA Ames, uh, I was working on robots and Mars missions. Then I founded my startup in Europe and I, in Poland, and I moved over here to expand the company. Uh, but re reality bites. My wife told me in 2014, uh, because my startup didn't launch exponentially, um, uh, she said, find yourself a proper job. So I, I found a job with IBM as a mobile first developer advocate. And um, because I was so spooked that uh, IBM is, uh, uh, is, is becoming a partner for, uh, for, um, uh, for Apple, and uh, I said, that's intriguing. And uh, so I joined as a developer advocate, and I learned a lot, and uh, I stayed since. So uh, it's been five years now, and in total tenure in IBM is, for me, it's 15 years, and uh, in addition to the startup. Uh, in free time, I'm also a rescue scuba diver. I, I did the, um, uh, I'm doing snowboarding, and um, if you haven't, n haven't known that, uh, we have a three hour drive to, um, to Tahoe, uh, and also to Yosemite, and you can, uh, you can snowboard or ski there. And I'm also a martial artist. Um, I did the uh, tournament last, um, uh, last April, uh, last days of April, in fact, so, um, so it was pretty, pretty awesome. Agenda for today, um, so as, as you know me, uh, now you, we can kind of see uh, through all the steps of, um, of serverless. I will try, try to introduce to, uh, the subject to you. Uh, but first, I would like to ask you, how many of you uh, heard about uh, serverless? Who is using Lambda? Is my competitor. Uh, who is using OpenWhisk? Okay, uh, so we will try to do OpenWhisk, which is one of the platforms. and. Um, so just basically uh, serverless or function as a service. These are the functions that you run against the uh, uh, software as a service. So you need um, some kind of the services being exposed to you. Uh, so you would uh, run functions as a service or serverless against some APIs in the cloud. So either it's a data storage uh, or object storage, it's a database or some other functions. And um, major companies are uh, providers are providing us with the uh, with the serverless technologies, uh, starting with Amazon, and then uh, we had uh, we had IBM who came over with uh, idea of OpenWhisk, and it was donated to um, uh, uh, to Apache Foundation. I will speak about, and other companies are are having also other um, other uh, platforms. And um, what's important about serverless? 
it's all about the code, and uh, we don't speak about um, uh, servers. These, these aspects are taken care uh, of by providers. So providers are taking care uh, of growing your, um, uh, your applications. There are some uh, safety limits. Um, I will speak ab about them uh, in a little bit. And um, so your application spe uh, scales on the basis uh, per request. So you get a lot of requests, you can scale up, and, um, and you are going to be charged accordingly. And charging is pretty uh, awesome because you are being charged just for the, uh, for the tick that you made on the, on the CPU. And during the time the, the application was running for you, the, uh, running the, the processing some event, you are just being charged for that. You are not going to be charged for the idle time. So, um, so it saves a lot, of, um, um, a lot of cash. So it's perfect solution for startups, uh, small organizations, and even large departments that want to save money because they don't see uh, benefits of uh, running or spinning the servers all the time. So where or why serverless is better? And um, so we started with, uh, uh, with the cloud from the bare metal. Uh, so you had to take, take care of everything, uh, uh, drivers for the hardware and uh, networking and so on. Then we, get, we got the virtual machines and then we get some containers, which are more optimized uh, virtual machines. And function as a service or functions became um, one more step in abstraction. So uh, if you have a small startup and you would like to get the huge valuation, uh, you would like to have um, this type of the uh, approach that is very light on the management uh, side. And in traditional model, what you would do, uh, you, would, um, you would create the service, you would start to spin it, and even though it's uh, uh, idle time, you, would, you have to spin the, the, the service because you have, you have the, some time for launching it up, and, uh, and you have to keep the, for example, long sessions going on. So, um, so th that, was, that was a traditional model. And if you use um, uh, Swift on the server side, uh, let's say uh, you would use Kitura or our competitor Vapor, uh, you can still use uh, Swift, but it would be on the server that spins and, uh, and burns your, uh, your CPU. So, so you would pay for all entire time. And um, you can use it on, on board of, uh, or on, on top of uh, uh, Cloud Foundry, which is the open source uh, project for um, platform as a service. And IBM is based uh, um, on this type of the uh, platform. You can run it on containers. So let's say you would create Kubernetes cluster and you would deploy the application and it would burn your servers, uh, your CPUs, or on, on top of the VM. In serverless model, everything is based on the event. So you start with the event that comes over, and, um, and then you uh, run the event. And um, OpenWhisk is, uh, the beauty of OpenWhisk is that it's a polyglot. So uh, it covers, uh, you can run, um, run your code, your, your action, in various languages. And Swift is one of them. So IBM is providing Swift as a production uh, grade uh, language. Uh, you can also run it in addition to JavaScript, Java, uh, Python. You can run it also in Docker. So in Docker, you can deploy even larger applications that have uh, some other uh, challenges of, uh, of, for example, the size of the, uh, of the memory that is required and so on. And um, when, when you run your engine, then you, your actions are, are being run and it's like kind of fire and forget. Uh, there are some, um, some things that you can add to, the, to it. I will cover them in a second. So, um, so everything starts with the, um, with the code that is executed um, after the event, in, in response to the event. And uh, this type uh, of, the, of the paradigm, uh, first promoted by Lambda in, uh, in AWS, um, found a, um, some seed and um, the framework was developed. And the framework was called openwisk.org. Uh, so openwisk is, the, is part, part of the Apache Foundation. So you can contribute, you can create your own uh, part of the code, you can, you can uh, add things to it. And it's great because you can, um, if some, uh, some new employer would, would ask you what is your project you are doing, you can say, oh, I, I wrote this uh, adapter for uh, OpenWhisk, for example. So it's great always to contribute and um, people are looking for uh, some proof of, uh, of your development. So um, that's the place to do it. And um, on IBM Cloud, you would uh, find more, cloud.ibm.com. 
slash OpenWhisk. This is the uh, place to find uh, more information. I will show you the, uh, the uh, catalog and, uh, and the functions uh, dashboard, so you, we will be able to dive into it. But uh, if you consider uh, everything, um, you would start with the, um, with the elements that are submitting, uh, sub submitting the events. And uh, the events are coming from various sources. Um, a lot of people are asking me what could be the event source. So, um, so if you see the event, it can come, for example, as a message in Kafka. Um, it can come in terms of the insert or change in the database. And uh, it could be a notification for mobile devices. But also there are other things like uh, change in the weather, uh, Slack message, or uh, it could be uh, Watson, which, which is AI in IBM terms. Uh, Watson produces uh, um, um, some, uh, some results and, um, and it tells you, okay, I, I'm done. So you can pick up the work and for example, add the tags to the picture or uh, analytics to a uh, uh, piece of the text. So when you have an event, then you start to, uh, then you start to work with the rules. And a uh, rule can be different uh, looking at the different um, situations. So one rule can tell you, oh, I see uh, that there is an insert in the database, but uh, it will check, oh, is it a picture or is it a movie? So uh, you would uh, act dependent, uh, in, uh, de dependent on, the, on the type of the insert or, or uh, so you, there are rules that you can uh, embed and uh, pull the action uh, depending on that. And, uh, and you can write in various languages. For us, the most uh, important is Swift. So I'm always happy to, to show that uh, Swift is one, one of the languages that is being supported. And, um, and then results, results are happening. So, so we have support for, uh, for, uh, for those languages uh, as a core. And some community uh, efforts are to bring other languages. But if you don't find your language or, or your framework over there, you can always use uh, Docker. And Docker can bring any other um, language uh, to be treated as an action. So you can, you can make a Docker as a one of the actions, a Docker uh, container. And uh, when you have an action, um, you, can, you can launch them in a periodic way. And then uh, the, the, if you want some level of uh, asynchronous way to treat them, you can have blocking or non-blocking um, actions. So they can block or uh, not block resources. So that, that way you can kind of work in an in a, uh, asynchronous way. And there are some uh, high-level uh, programming constructions. So for example, you can, um, uh, you can have uh, loops, uh, error handling, and, um, and then you can have also some parameters that you pass over. So, um, so it's uh, like real uh, programming. Uh, but what you would do, you would do it for just one, one, uh, one action, one function. Um, like if you have a HTTP request, you would divide it into four. I'm going to, to show it uh, in the next slide. So event provider is one thing that uh, you have uh, open interface for event emitters. So you can write your own, um, uh, let's say, emitter uh, for your particular uh, software. And, um, and then you can uh, commit it to the, um, to the uh, Apache Foundation and, uh, and get it uh, published. Um, but also a uh, provider like IBM is providing various um, uh, um, event providers. So um, one of them is just periodic, so like a cron. Uh, IBM Cloud and is a NoSQL database that you can just um, add. Uh, if there is an insert or change in the database, you would, uh, you would find it over there, and it would emit the um, uh, information. If you have event streams, this is a commercial version of the Kafka framework hosted by IBM. So if you have the message coming, it would generate for you the event, and you can uh, uh, work accordingly. Mobile push is the same. If you get notification, you can uh, react with the, with the action. GitHub change and app connect is a connection to the business application like Salesforce or, um, um, or other, um, other applications there. Granular pricing. So pricing is based on the, as I said, based on the time um, you are spending on the CPU running uh, your, uh, your action. And there is a free tier, and I'm going to um, to show you in a, in an example uh, uh, in a couple of minutes uh, how you can count um, the free tier. Uh, there is a simulation, and we can see uh, how it's cool for the developers to just test it, and uh, you can save so much money just to run uh, event-based uh, backend. 
Um, <clears throat> and there is a framework that is um, uh, supported, and it's vendor agnostic. So if you say, uh, would like to run it on top of a different platform, you can always do it. Uh, this Knative that supports, for example, uh, serverless, and so you can stand up your own uh, um, stack and uh, run a serverless on top of it. So um, IBM has some stack that you would like to work with. Uh, we have containers um, and, uh, and event-driven uh, programming. That's the part of it. And But you would go from the various industries, and you can kind of match it there. But um, from terms of the startup, for example, if I'm a, a startup founder, I would like to get um, uh, the biggest amount of the work done with the smallest amount of people. Uh, the function as a service is one of the ways to do it because it's, it really requires the least amount of the, of the administration and so on because it's all based on the, uh, on the side of the, uh, of the, of the provider, vendor, uh, that provides you with the serverless framework. So let's say you would go to IBM Cloud, and, uh, you would use this framework, and uh, IBM would take care of uh, quality of service for you. Then you have um, Cloud Foundry, which is the platform as a service. Uh, you can spin your, but it requires to spin your services. So you can have auto scaling, but you will, you will pay for, for spinning services and uh, servers that are running. Container, the same. You have to deploy at least one container, maybe, and that responds to the, um, to the requests. And you can say uh, one container where, when, when there is no people coming or very little amount of the requests. And when, the, when we need to grow, let's scale it up to 10, 10 containers. And uh, then you have virtual servers, so it's a more, um, uh, you can uh, have more control. And uh, bare metal, you can really tune your uh, hardware um, and tailor it to your solution, but it requires a lot of uh, uh, system, system administration, so, um, uh, so that's maybe difficult. And um, IBM is providing uh, or having a lot of uh, contribution to open source, so you can find us in Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, as I was speaking about that. And uh, OpenWhisk is one, yet another pil uh, pillar over there. And um, so um, um, when you create your uh, events, they need to be, um, uh, they are for volatile or event-driven uh, workloads. Uh, you, can, um, you can have uh, very, uh, Let's say you would like to get the tags for the picture, so you would uh, create the uh, uh, request from uh, from time to time. But also you can uh, have a load of the uh, uh, of the heavy load of the um, uh, of the requests. Uh, let's say uh, you would uh, concurrently process a lot of um, uh, a lot of pictures based on the video that you would process. So you'd load a lot of YouTube videos. And um, one of the examples I'm always using, and uh, uh, I will show you a little bit of the approach, how to do it. Uh, my son is a video blogger. He's 12 years old. And, um, and he started to video blog uh, when he was nine. So he, he had the freedom in doing that. But uh, for me, it was very hard uh, following what he's, do <laughs> what he's doing. So uh, you could imagine you could trace what he's doing with the uh, AI. You can see what kind of pictures he's presenting. So you can slice the video. And um, every time he's publishing a 15 minutes video, uh, uh, serverless could pick over, uh, could pick it up and, uh, and slice the video into frames and see if there is any nudity in the video or something or fall language. So he could get the ban for, the, uh, for using uh, screens for some time. So, so that's one of the ideas you can have. And um, so API Gateway, um, as I mentioned before, uh, you would uh, try to um, kind of create a proxy to your um, serverless engine and map uh, through some kind of uh, gateway uh, to map the um, uh, requests. And uh, one of the ways to do it is uh, using this API gateway, which is free of charge. And uh, it not only provides you with the way to expose API, API and upload kind of a documentation through uh, Swagger, but, uh, but you can test it, you can explore it, and, uh, and you can really hide the, the backend uh, from, from the user. So you can get, uh, for example, get customer, create customer, delete customer, update the customer. So you can get this type of the functions <coughs> that are uh, hidden behind, uh, behind the um, kind of uh, uh, API gateway that just provides the, the, the entry level. So mobile backend, um, you would use the API gateway to expose the, the functions for, uh, for all these actions. 
And, um, and then you would create an, an action, and one of them could be, for example, a mobile notification or, or enrichment of the data and so on. And, um, and, and there are a lot of various um, uh, models that you can use, for example, processing of the, uh, of the messages, even binary messages that are coming. So you can, um, you can play with various uh, technologies. And one of the um, um, elements that you would use would be the picture or media uh, enrichment and, or processing and enrichment. And for that, you would use uh, cognitive uh, aspects. So you would add, uh, for example, Watson services. And when you use the one cloud uh, for serverless, you can add the Watson, for example, services without delay. So um, you don't need to hop between um, uh, between clouds or, or regions. And uh, even my son, as I, as I mentioned, he's a video blogger, so he's a Fortnite player. And whenever he plays uh, with my accent, so he's playing in Poland with, with his friends, but when he plays from here in Poland, he's saying, uh, Dad, I don't know what ping is, but uh, I'm glitching so much. So, so even kids 12 years old understand that the glitching, you don't want to have a glitching in your mobile application. So you want to stay as close to, to, um, to the user, and also you want to um, uh, have a very short time between uh, requests inside the cloud. So, so that's the one of the ways to, uh, to um, optimize, and uh, the optimi optimization would be to use the same cloud for AI and, uh, and for other processing. So um, I covered data processing, and, um, and uh, I, I have a couple uh, examples, and we will be able to run them uh, just after this um, uh, kind of uh, how, how uh, we are supporting uh, your execution. So you can see uh, how the services are being executed, what is the time, and um, you can drill down on the, on the functions. And, uh, and now it's the time for, uh, for li little of the examples. So um, one of the examples is, uh, so I would start with, uh, if you want to follow me, uh, you would start with the account, ibm.b uh, slash capital B, D, 2, K, da, capital D, and M. And then uh, you can go to my uh, GitHub repository. You can find me as a blue Marek S, but without blue, without E. And um, so let me try to do it. So the steps are uh, pretty simple. Um, so I created the uh, so cloud, IBM.com. I am serverless Marek. And, um, and if you come to the uh, dashboard, it looks more or less like this. You can go to the catalog, and later on, you can bind a lot of, um, uh, a lot of services, more than 150 services. For light account, so I created an account like you would create a light account. Uh, you would find. Um, a lot of services that are open for testing, uh, they are free of charge, so you can, you can really use them. But if you go to the functions, um, so I have the functions below finance, and um, so when you go to the functions, you can, uh, you can check it out, what is over there, and, um, and I think uh, it, should, it should work. Let me just increase the size of this. So uh, functions. Um, so my example would be based on the start creating. But uh, I told you that I'm going to show you also about, um, about pricing. So. If you go down, uh, you will see um, uh, what is, let me see if it's, it requires just a, yeah, I don't see the, the letters, but uh, let, me, let me try to run it. So let's say uh, average time of, of, uh, of running uh, my service would be, uh, average time uh, for, the, for the service, it would be about 500 milliseconds. And I would co uh, consume half a giga, and I would have uh, 50,000 50, calls uh, per month. Now, why this guy doesn't work over here? I think I need to change the browser. So 
sorry about that. I don't know why, why it happened. So. So just sing, single sign on, uh, bear with me just a second. And um, my function stop, stop to work, I think. There's some major change now happening, I guess. So um, uh, you would see the uh, free, li free limit. Um, and uh, if, you, if you go, um, and you would check the prices for the for the software with the with some um, some fee tier. You would see part of it is um, uh, is free. I don't know why it's it's blocking me now. Let me go to the uh, example that I have. Net network doesn't help me out over here. Okay, uh, so um, you would find all all this talk over here. Um, so you can go for uh, and check examples that are being provided for you. But if you want to start creating, just click on the start creating, and it should open for you the, uh, the framework. I need to uh, restart every time it's uh, reload, it's so slow, I don't know. Do you guys have the same responses, or it's uh, just me over here? So what page is this opening up here? Is this a, a build widget? Yeah, it, it will be a, it will be a small page that you can uh, you can have a kick, kick start or a, a small starter kit that uh, helpers that you can uh, you can use and quickly uh, digest the code. So I'm trying to get, get to it. And uh, there is also uh, one of the examples that you can download very quickly with uh, iOS uh, SDK. So maybe I will cover that um, while we are waiting. So one of the examples that you have, uh, pretty simple example, um, uh, and uh, the call to the, uh, that's now I'm, I'm going to have to change that. So very simple example, you will see that you, you can download the part of the code. Uh, it just allows you to uh, access it, um, access the backend that is serverless. It's just this part of the code. So you're providing the, the uh, token, and then you are running the, uh, the code uh, when, uh, whenever, it's, um, whenever it's called. So Yeah, I will, I, will, I will try once more over here. It takes too, too long time. So, so are you saying that the code on the server isn't necessarily Swift? You're kind of like, it's got its own language or its own? Yeah, it's, uh, so it can be in Swift. Uh, so uh, the Swift is one of the languages that is supported. I'm always uh, using Swift uh, for, for, for my presentations. Uh, um, and. And Swift is one of the backends that you can use. So you can write uh, your application in Swift, your iOS application, and then you would have the backend also in Swift. So you can kind of share the same, uh, the same paradigm, uh, the same um, data constructs. So it's very fast to, uh, to download it. And uh, I mean, to, to write it and uh, have the same kind of team uh, to, to be on the both sides. And um, let me see if it's, uh, so it deployed. So um, the very simple application, you tap and uh, and it's there. Let me try to run it. Maybe it's uh, it's going to. Uh, now I'm.
my browser just um, doesn't respond at all. So, um, so if you go to uh, iOS SDK, so uh, I showed you the application. So let me uh, follow you with the uh, with the every step that you can make in order to do it. So, if you go for uh, for the first link, uh, it will uh, download for you an application. So, uh, so if you uh, if we if we come over here. Um, oh. What I wanted. So I downloaded the application and it's um, this part over here. Let me just drop it, drop it to over here. So I downloaded the starter app over here. Um, you can use it under um, Cartage, or you can use it uh, in uh, Cocoa Pods. So uh, pod install. I'm not. I'm not sure how it's going to run. It's my network now. So it was pretty pretty quick. Um, so now I can uh, open the application. It runs. So this is the application I, I showed you just just before. So it, this is how easy you can. Uh, you can get the first code running for you. And what you need to do over here, so you can, uh, you can, just, uh, you can just copy over these two, two elements, and I have them here. So, so these are two, two elements that I have in my code. And, um, and just passing these uh, elements would, uh, would allow you to run the code on the, on the client side. So. So now if I run my application, you, you have seen it already, but it's, um, it's very simple. One thing that I wanted to cover, and though it's, um, uh, this is just the hit to the, uh, to the backend, so it's a very simple uh, part of the code. So I, I'm getting back the information from the, from, from, from the server. Uh, and it's serverless, so I'm paying just for the time I produce this code. So I'm not paying for uh, keeping the infrastructure behind me. Uh, let me try once more with the with this guy. No, no, this is this is not working over here. Um, so one more thing is uh, that I wanted to mention um, uh, was that um, uh, you will see when when you launch uh, for the first time um, the code, uh, it has some cold start. So you would expect that probably. Uh, so some people are running the code uh, in such a manner that um, I will re reload one. So start creating, maybe, maybe I will be more successful now. Yeah, everybody's streaming. They, there must be some movie. Um, so um, uh, one of the things that you would notice, you would, um, uh, some people are creating the cron, um, uh, uh, cron revive kind of um, uh, actions that would uh, keep spinning your, I mean spinning, getting warm your service. Because the first run can take about two, three seconds to kind of uh, warm it up, load it to the, um, uh, to the application. But, um, but in order to avoid that, you can uh, either pre-compile uh, pre um, um, and make it faster. So instead of having to wait like two, two and a half, three, three seconds, you would, you would get this action very fast. And every 15 minutes, you would run the cron uh, that would revive the uh, or keep warm your your action. So, so that's one of the um, uh, good things to do uh, if you want to have very responsive backend. Because, um, uh, but you would pay for every like uh, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm uh, I don't know what is happening with this um, with this network. I I can try to connect to my my phone. I haven't tried that now, so let me. So now everybody connects to my iPhone. And I will deconnect from this guy. It says 5G. That, that's for advertisement, so. <laughs> I just connected now, so I don't know. 
have, I have bad reception. So uh, let, me, let me just finish. I have a couple slides more that I can uh, um, rescue myself uh, from, the, from, from this. So um, I was telling you about my son that is producing a video blogs. And uh, so imagine a situation now you would have um, a monitor for the sh kind of chaperone for, uh, um, for, for kids or, or any uh, other, for employees, for example, what they are watching. And uh, you could, you could uh, go after the videos. And videos are really uh, a lot of data happening. And uh, it's very hard to kind of tag them even for your personal, uh, um, uh, personal um, purposes. So imagine you are going for the trip, uh, coming back with a lot of videos, you'd like to tag them. So uh, we have a framework, um, and uh, it's um, open source uh, called Dark Vision. And in, in this, um, in this uh, framework, you can tag the pictures, and you can even download the, or transcribe your audio, so to have the transcript of entire uh, entire video as well. So you would get the. Later on, you can search uh, on uh, based on the tags of the messages what what what, what was done uh, or what was recorded over there, and um, and. It's not like uh, having people watching them. Uh, you can really launch a lot of uh, videos, and if you have the resources, financial resources to do it, you would, you would spin it. But it's, um, as I said, you pay for just the amount you, you, you burn on the server. And then you can have a lot of tags. You can have tags for, um, uh, or keywords for the, uh, for the video and the keywords for, the, uh, uh, for audio, and how it's being done. So, Imagine you have an application, and uh, as I said, I will show you the link for, uh, for app itself um, and how you can download it and run it for, uh, in your system. So you have an app, you would say, oh, I want this video, so you would drop the link or, or the video itself uh, to the API gateway, and this API gateway would insert the video inside the um, database, or you would use also object storage for that. So you would have an, um, a video in object storage, and it would create the insert would create an um, action, and this action would um, would then uh, say uh, you would have a rule, rule that's saying uh, whenever I see video, I'm going to run a video extractor, and you would create the uh, Docker-based video extractor, so just a plain uh, Linux-based uh, application that would slice the video into the frames, and you would load the frames in, back into the cloud and database or any da database. So now, whenever you have a new insert and it's a, a video, uh, it's not the video, it's a picture, you would say, oh, okay, uh, new rule is that uh, whenever you have a picture, you go with the image analysis through, uh, through Watson. So very fast uh, process. And, um, and that's just uh, the way how it's being enriched. So in our um, uh, framework, OpenWhisk, you can have the trigger uh, that triggers the, um, the processing of the OpenWhisk action. You have rule that um, shows the, uh, how, the, how you uh, process the, uh, the data, so picture versus uh, video. And then you have uh, either action video extractor based on the Docker or image analysis, uh, so your Swift action together with, uh, uh, together with Watson service. <clears throat> What's important for us? No server to deploy. We have single purpose uh, polyglot actions that you can improve over the time. And everything is even driven. So, so I, I promised you with the link. Um, so link is here if you want to just uh, uh, take the picture uh, or just look for uh, dark vision. Uh, you can find it and uh, it's an uh, open source uh, project uh, describing step by step uh, everything. And, um, and I think uh, on that, um, I, will, uh, I will open floor for questions. I will see also if, <coughs> excuse me, uh, if I manage to get the, oh yeah. So I can show you how to create the template. So maybe that's the last uh, example we can run. Hopefully, it, uh, so now it runs on 5G because I, uh, so it's maybe faster. So hello world. <coughs> so let's say dub dub dc alt conf. And uh, you have a couple languages that you can use. So Swift 4 is one of them. And that's a very simple code that 
response uh, to, to insert, so I will deploy it. I have full reception bars, but it's uh, so slow, I don't know. Funny thing, I did this presentation this morning, um, and it was so fast. I was, I was doing this presentation during the webinar, so I was uh, streaming, and uh, it worked just fine. So you never know what is happening. Um. <coughs> okay, floor, floor is open for questions. If it uh, arises, just let me know, so I will be able to answer some questions, if there are any. Yeah. Um, here you go. So what are some of the future directions for the uh, serverless platform? Um, uh, so that's a very good question. We, at the moment, are, um, are working for, um, for adding a lot of uh, event producers, um, uh, catching up with all the languages that are being requested. And, um, and I think the, um, the next big thing is, um, uh, is extending the time for running the processes. So, um, the longest time uh, are having our, um, so when you run the, uh, the code, the longest time it can run, I think it's a, at the moment it's 15 seconds. Uh, so there's time out for that. And, um, and that's one of, the, uh, one of the limitations. So, um, so that's, that's the direction. It's getting to be more and more uh, robust, I think. So. So Swift is one of the languages we have, and, um, and uh, we are looking for the support for various languages. So people are asking, for example, for non-Swift-based languages. So we want to extend it to the other languages. Swift is one of the first that was tackled uh, in, a, in, a, in approach. So. so thank you for question. Any other questions? All right, I'm giving you oh, back we, uh, the, we the had afternoon. A, There's one more. Yep. Yeah, one more. Go ahead. Uh, maybe this is a, sorry, pragmatic question. Uh, do I need to create a function before I get my Whisk API keys? Because I didn't see it on the on the I, iOS SDK page. So, do you? Um, question was, do you need to create your your function before you create your uh, request? I, I didn't get, didn't get. Uh, it. Sorry. So what I experienced was I went to iOS SDK in the sidebar. Okay. Didn't the, where it said, uh, or where on the iOS SDK you had, here's your Whisk API key, here's your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, my, so that's. Mine were uh, empty. I, I, I got you. I got you now. So it's, uh, um, it's just uh, uh, showing how you can fast hit the uh, backend. <laughs> without the function really being uh, involved because there's no function. The, just, uh, um, I remember there was a similar function for the, uh, for the uh, databases. You can just run uh, and check if you can uh, hit the clock and get the clock from the, uh, from the database. This is the same kind of approach. So it's a system test if you can uh, have a handshake with the backend. So it wasn't uh, having a handshake with, I mean, it wasn't, a, um, running the, the function, it was just hitting the backend. Uh, but it, everything was passed over, so, uh, so now you just need to, uh, there are a couple examples. I'm so afraid of running them at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Ah, they are empty. Uh, have, you, have you logged in at all? Um, so, um, so one of the things, for sure you can do uh, to, to have the functions uh, running for you. It's uh, going to catalog and, uh, and I guess just writing a uh, function. So you should get the functions somewhere over here. Functions. So, um, so then um, when you click on that, you would go to the, uh, you, should, you should, I don't know why, I'm having a problem with the platform now. Uh, so I'm sorry for that. 
but, um, but I hope uh, you, will, you will find a lot of uh, examples that I have on my uh, GitHub repository, so uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> Always telling this to my wife, that wasn't me. Come on, let's go with that. <coughs> Right, thank you very yeah, much. It was a crash. Thank you so much. <laughs>